So what's the Super 73 Z Force One? That's coming right up. Hey everyone, my name is Rick Cordero. Welcome to Run Playback, where we help you with video and tech tips to lead a more efficient and affordable lifestyle. Let's be creative and save money at the same time. Today we're gonna check out our fully modded 72 volt Super 73 Z1, which we've affectionately codenamed the Z Force One. We'll talk about what we fabricated, the accessories we used, the speed, power, and all that good stuff. So let's get to it. keep modding the Super 73 Z1? Well, the simple answer is it's turned into a full-blown science project at this point. There's virtually no stock components on our Z1 anymore, except for the frame. Is it necessary? Absolutely not. But is it fun to tinker with and test? We'll let you guys decide. But first, let's unbox the key components. Here is the phase runner. This is the version three cycle analyst from Grintech. This is basically the display. It's kind of big and it's not color. I think this is the only display that's compatible with this controller. A couple of different connectors here. You have your power button, your up-down control, and I'm not quite sure what these other wires are for. Here's a close-up of the handlebar switch with the power, the up and down controls, and the menu. I'm not sure how I feel about how big this is. <laughs> so you could have an output power on this, so you could put lights on this or something. That's pretty cool. So all of these are basically what you would expect to find on the actual controller. They're just connected to the display. Okay, so now I know what this thing is. And this is just like a cable cover to hide all this stuff. And here is the phase runner. Here is the USB programming cable. So I think the software is compatible with PC or Mac. I love doing that in my electric skateboard days programming the VESC with the BLDC tool and fine-tuning my motor, making the motor silent. Like that's the reason that I picked up the phase runner. We want to do some actual measuring four inches by one and a half inches. So this is a tiny, tiny, tiny controller, yet it can handle um, 24 to 72 volts with a maximum of 96 amps. So I'm really hoping this works with the Z1. Like I am stoked to make this thing work. This is the Grintech phase runner. A couple of people have been telling me about it, so I wanted to pick it up. It's not cheap by any means. This is not a cheap uh, eBay controller like what I was using for the 48 volt, but so far so good. I mean, this is pretty high quality stuff. Like you get what you pay for, for sure. The fact that they're in Canada as well, um, and they have a really great reputation uh, check out their YouTube videos. I mean, these guys are like, <laughs> just like next level, like e-bike tech innovators, like 100%. I totally support that. Like, I know this is not like something that most people would want to get into, like programming a controller, but hopefully this video will encourage people to kind of, you know, take the leap. Regardless of like, you know, the cost, obviously it's a hindrance for a lot of people. But I wouldn't use sort of like the difficulty to sway you away from buying something like this. Um, I am kind of like intimidated with programming it, but again, I'm gonna try to, you know, talk to some folks who have done it and it should be pretty simple. And hopefully this video will help you guys if you were thinking about using this controller. So why do we go with Grintech's Phase Runner and Cycle Analyst? Essentially the Phase Runner is a small, lightweight and waterproof controller that can turn any e-bike into a smooth, efficient beast. If you've ever heard of the VESC or field-oriented control, it's basically the same thing except for e-bikes. Unlike most e-bike controllers where the throttle controls the amount of RPM and volts into the motor, the phase runner throttle directly controls the motor torque. This means when you throttle on the phase runner, it processes the load while riding. This pushes a constant steady torque into your ride even when you speed up or slow down. This means an incredibly dialed in ride and longer range because you're not just smashing volts into the motor. You're only using what's needed because it regulates the motor phase current, which is why it's called the phase runner. The best thing it does is something called field weakening, which some believe that Tesla does to boost the top speed on their motors. By injecting a field weakening current that's perpendicular to the torque current, it creates a 15 to 20% speed boost. And it isn't like an on and off feature, you can actually dial in the amps to create your desired effect. The fact that you're the only one who can determine all of these values, depending on how you like to ride, 
is really next level customization. However, it isn't really for everyone because it does take time to dial in your settings. But for those who like to unlock the full capabilities of their ride, it's really a dream come true. Now, before we ride, let's do a rundown of all the mods. fabricated our custom frame enclosure using plywood and ABS plastic. The wooden frame is attached using steel hinges and reinforced with wood screws. We sprayed it with matte black paint and reinforced it with a few coats of polyurethane. Cable holes, ports, and threaded inserts were also installed. Next, we reinforced the wood frame with 1 8 inch ABS plastic. The ABS plastic panels were also fitted with silver and gunmetal gray metallic brushed vinyl which was inspired by the Onyx RCR. The panels are removable using quarter 20 button head socket screws that attach to the quarter 20 inserts. To make the box fit, we modified the Z1 seat enclosure by trimming all the plastic that was in the way. Our Z Force 1 seat was custom made by Saul's Upholstery, one of the earliest and most prominent names in custom e-bike seats. We've been a fan of Saul's work for some time and his customer service is impeccable. We sent over some mock-up photos and sample designs and he matched it exactly to our specs. The final product was perfectly stitched with black thread on black leather, as well as the addition of more foam to sit a little higher up on the bike. For the fenders, we're using a modified version of the Onyx RCR DRT front fender. The aggressive style of the fender matches well with the Z1's 20 by three inch wheel size. The rear fender is from a stock Suron. This is a mod recommended by Cody Vandenberg on the Super 73 Mods Group. The fender sits perfectly on the rear and really accentuates the unique V-shaped line of the Z1's frame. Our pedals are actually stock Onyx RCR pedals, which I believe are aluminum alloy moped pedals from Treatland TV. These pedals weigh about 6.8 ounces each and give the bike a nice moped accent. We installed Clubman style Cafe Racer handlebars for a more aerodynamic look. We also used 22 millimeter handlebar risers and custom M6 bolts to make it a little bit more comfortable when riding. For the mirrors, we're using heavy duty 3.9 inch motorcycle bar end mirrors with a powder coated black finish. These mirrors can be adjusted with vertical stems and are perfect for mounting indicator lights. To even out the line from the fork to the raised custom seat, we added an accessory panel made from painted plywood, 1 8 inch ABS plastic, and three inch PVC pipe cut horizontally. This panel will be used to install a USB port and charging cable for easy access to program the phase runner and to charge the battery. We've upgraded our brake system from Shimano hydraulics to Magura four piston calipers paired with 203 millimeter rotors. The front brake uses the MT5 and the rear brake uses the MT7E that includes a mechanical switch integrated inside the brake lever. This is connected directly to the cycle analyst to activate regen braking which results in a three to 8% increase in your range from recaptured energy and a massive reduction in the wear and tear on the brake pads. For lighting, we're using our DIY lighting rig, which if you haven't checked it out yet, provides a super detailed tutorial on how to create your own. We're using a Honda Grom three bar LED headlight to match the hard angles of our enclosure system, along with two sequential LED indicators. Our bar end mirrors also have indicators to provide better vertical visibility. On high beam mode, all the lights turn white. For the side panels, we installed sequential LED strip indicators to provide visibility on the sides, as well as white on high beam mode. This look was 100% inspired by Alvin Bose and Dat Shop NYC, which he perfected for the Onyx RCR. On the rear, we have our standard flexible taillight with additional indicators that wrap around the rear frame bar for maximum visibility. This keeps everything streamlined and minimal. The brake lights are activated by micro switches that are mounted near the brake levers. For the motor, we installed a custom built 3000 watt XOFO DD45 direct drive hub motor. This motor has a 45 millimeter wide stator, which is similar to the motors of MX US. The rim is a 20 inch 65 millimeter wide Weinman double walled rim with spoke holes close to the center line for proper spoke triangulation. This rim is slightly narrower than the stock Z1 rim, but perfectly matched with the XOFO DD45. Inside of the custom enclosure are the electronics. On the top shelf, we installed the 72 volt to 12 volt step down converter, the light harness, and the phase runner. On the bottom shelf, we installed a custom made brick lithium 72 volt 12.6 amp hour battery. The pack uses one of the most sought after cells on the market, which is the Tesla Model 3 2170 cell, 
with a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity. Although the range isn't high, it should be fine for quick errands downtown. In the future, we can simply adjust the top shelf to incorporate more amp hours. But for now, this will do. Also shout out to Mike Adkins, who has a lot of great information on YouTube about Grintech products and his Super 73 Z1. Now, the first thing we want to talk about is the power. Now, right off the bat, the torque and throttle response is very, very smooth. Compared to the KT controller, it's kind of like night and day. Um, what the phase runner does is it, you know, it regulates the motor phase currents. And so it's just not smashing volts into the motor. It's actually, you know, kind of giving it um, just what it needs. And that's kind of, uh, that's kind of what, why it creates uh, that smooth response. The torque is, is very nice, but it, it's not uh, abrupt. Right, like the KT controllers, um, it's kind of abrupt. It's kind of just pushing all those amps and you know everything that's in the battery right into the motor. Um, what this does is it's a little bit of a pickup, but once you, you know, once it gets to speed, um, in just a few seconds you're already, you're already good. You know, you really feel that power. I can feel the the volts kicking into the motor, but it's it's smooth. Even when I let go of the throttle. Um, it's regulating the power, right? It's not just like on and off, it's, it's a slow, you could feel the motor slowly ramping down or even staying at speed. There's something called virtual freewheeling. So it simulates the, the act of freewheeling on a regular bike, but it's compensating for the weight of an e-bike. So we also have regen braking enabled and that's the MT7E Magura brakes. So on the right side, when I hit the brake, it's actually feeding volts into the motor to help stop it. And what that does is it kind of saves the, uh, the, brake, the brake pads and, and things like that. The smoother response and the efficiency, it's really noticeable. Uh, even when I'm like gunning it, it's you know, the curve, the throttle curve is just smooth. You know, I think what the phase runner is doing is it's not going to overheat your motor because I think it brings it down. I think the amps go down to 50, even though it's um, set to 96 right now. The way it's set up for this frame, you know, this is just a steel frame with just the front suspension fork, no rear suspension. Uh, it's a very small bike. It's a good combination, uh, especially with this motor. I think uh, a bigger, more powerful motor, something that's rated from 3,000 to 5,000 watts, would be a little bit overkill. I know people have done that, but um, you know, you're going to introduce just a little bit more stress on the frame. And I already have dual torque arms on this thing, so uh, I think this is good. I think this is just enough for this bike and just enough to keep up with the Onyx RCR. You know, I have the motor phase current set at 96 amps. I have my field weakening top speed overdrive set to 35 amps and everything else is pretty much maxed out to unlimited mode. Um, so we'll see how this goes. I think I also want to add some stator aid as well and probably some bigger tires so that'll affect the top speed but uh, let's see what we have just based on these settings alone. Gonna make sure I'm all clear here. Okay, we are good. Let's get around this curve. All right, let's see how we do. Six, thirty-seven, thirty-seven miles per hour, thirty-nine, forty, forty-two, forty-two miles per hour. We're holding steady at forty-two miles per hour, and about forty-two miles per hour on that one, uh, which was pretty good. It felt very smooth. It didn't feel too shaky or anything like that. So. Very happy with that. Let's try it again. 
30 miles per hour, 33, 37, 38. Going uphill, 38, 39, 39, holding the 39, 40, 43, now 43. 43 miles per hour on that run. So that was our top speed test. Um, not bad. I mean, I really think that, you know, 35 miles per hour is kind of the sweet spot on this type of bike. Uh, going any faster than that uh, is a little sketchy because the bike is pretty small. Now, in terms of the battery, I'm using a brick lithium 72 volt, 12.6 amp hour battery. Uh, now, I think just based on the amount of riding I did on this, I think I can get about 30 miles based on my weight um, and just kind of how efficient the phase runner is. Um, I think if you weigh maybe over 170 pounds, you would probably get less range, but for me, I'm, you know, a small dude, I'm getting some really good numbers on this thing, even though the amp hours are small. Uh, this bike, you know, weighs, you know, less than, maybe less than half the Onyx, uh, but it's still 72 volts. So the, you know, the less weight is compensating for the range. You know, the phase runner, the regen, the, uh, field-oriented control. I think it's really doing wonders for the range of this thing. I, just, I haven't had that kind of efficiency on the Onyx or even on the KT controller or even on the stock uh, Super 73 controller. Overall, we're really satisfied with the combination of parts on this build. And obviously, it's a completely different bike now. Now you're probably wondering, how much did all of this cost? We're not too sure because we actually stopped counting, but it's definitely more than the initial cost of the bike. This project was more of an experiment than a way to save money on a higher end model because after all, we do own the Onyx RCR. This kind of build is for those who aren't motivated by buying cheap parts overseas. Instead, it's to support quality components from reputable vendors like Brick Lithium, Sol's Upholstery, and Grintech. Also, the ability to program and fully customize your settings is a steep yet rewarding learning curve. If you have any questions or suggestions to improve this build, please leave them in the comments below. If you wanna dive into more video and tech tips, click the links on the side, and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.